Yeah, the the Megan the Megan Markle debacle, as I call it. What what are your thoughts on it? I know you have some thoughts. Oh, I have thoughts. <laughs> oh shit. I do. I have thought. I'm like, look, I'm not an anti-monarchist. Okay, let's just put that out there. I'm not an anti-monarchist. I think that there is like been really amazing examples throughout history where like even totalitarian monarchies have done really well yeah. you know if the people are good it's good whatever but here you know we're talking about england so in <laughs> england i'm not, i'm personally i'm not an anti anti monarch because i have a lot of friends who are like we don't fucking need them yeah. you know like i could rather keep my three pence a week or whatever it is it costs for them to to exist yeah. i think that on a on a you know originally before i went to acting i was in political school so like you know practically yes i can see why the the the, the establishment would keep them and like how it can bond the country together mm. and how they can be ambassadors for the UK, especially now during Brexit, they're going to be really busy right now. Um, but yeah, but when it comes to, first of all, it's not really, it's, not, it's hard because it's a personal family matter. Like, that, you know, that's the thing, it's right? a family matter. It's a and, family fucking matter. And I don't want to, um, I would never normally like, you know, it's not our business, you know, even though they're public and they are kind of owned by the state. So everyone <laughs> thinks that like, you know, Hey, we can make a comment because like, you know, they're, they're our, you know, monarchy. Yeah. Um, like obviously like as a kid who's lost a parent, like, you know, and not in the same like parameters as Prince Harry, but like as someone who's lost a parent, yeah. I have a lot of empathy and could understand perhaps like, uh, you know. Um, Let me know if you want some tea, by the way. Oh, no, chill, dude. I'm just sipping okay. away on my little cool, delicious man. latte. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I, I feel for... So for you have him. empathy for Harry? For I do have... Predicament. I mean, that's what every English person, because they all love Aunt Harry and they like have empathy for And they love Diana as well. They love Diana and like, you know, and they kind of see this sort of... But I think that like compar comparing Diana to Meghan Markle is a bit of a stretch because... Let's face it. Like she knew, she knew she was gonna, she knew she was gonna get a prince. You know what I mean? Like she, she was gonna get a prince. She knew they was. Well, she, she said that she didn't know. Right? I well, what did you? What would you say? Yeah. Would you say that like I was gonna go to all his charity things and I like like asked all my friends like you know like whatever and then get set up with a blind date with Prince Harry and then all the like, babe, no, that doesn't just that doesn't just happen. Okay. It's true. First of all, second of all, it's like look, there's a million other like you know handsome millionaire boys out there that could have given her all that freedom and mm. everything. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And like I'm not looking at this as a state, a state owned kind of whatever. Mm. They're a family, you know what I mean? And I don't know what the, like I said, I'm just a nobody. And so like, and I would never really comment on family yeah. issues, but I do have a brother, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And I've seen families like break up because of like kind of poor matches or misunderstandings. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying, look, if Happy is, like if Harry's happy as shit and whipped with like Megan, like must be some magic. Do you think he's whipped? He could be. I mean, she's gorgeous. She's beautiful. She's beautiful. And she's woman. charismatic. And look, the Amer the English have like a thing for the Americans. You know what I mean? Americans are like as the exact opposite almost of like that yeah. kind of thing. And so like I, I get it. Like I, I get the attraction. And her baby's beautiful. Like yeah. I mean, if it's true that the monarchy were like, oh, what the shade of the baby's gonna be? Yeah, that'd piss me the fuck off. I had a I used to date this girl back in the day. Shout out to Nadia. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> so she was half Jamaican. Mm. Her dad was Jamaican, but culturally she was very English, you mm. know. Of course. Uh, cuz her mom was English and she didn't know her dad sadly growing up. Mm. But um so I went to Greece with her on holiday and my Greek grandmother met her. She was very nice to her. And then like after we broke up like a year later or so, I was talking to my Greek grandmother and she was like, I was so relieved when you broke up with that girl. <laughs> I, I I don't know what I would have done if you had a black baby. Yeah. I need to be fair. And it's like, look, she's 85 now. Yeah. Yeah. Look, so. old people, I think once you really, I think there's a certain generational thing, you forgive them. Yeah. But like, I always pull them up. Like my mom, like, you know, my in the Philippines as well, Filipinos are a little bit like stuck in, in, in the back, you know, I'm like, yeah. in the fifties America sort of thing. Yeah. And like, I'm not going to say it because I don't want to, well, it was, to be fair, she was like, I had a friend from Zimbabwe. Yeah. Um, I love you, Siva. And like, um, my <laughs> auntie, up. my auntie came over, like we were having whatever and we we're all in the living room. Everything's chill. My mom loved, loved her. Like, you know, everyone was cool. And then um, she went to the bathroom and then my aunt and my mom came back into the, the living room and my aunt was like, oh, Dudong, where's your nigger friend? I was like, you shut the fuck up. 
Gordon did she Ram- hear it? Did she hear it? No, thank God. Oh. She uh, the moment like yeah, but no, no, no. But like uh, yeah, no, no, no. just like go to the fucking like go to the kitchen. Go back to the kitchen. Do not wait. Talk. Did you just tell a woman to get? Yeah, back I did. My kitchen? auntie. <laughs> I mean, like, look, a racial slur. Okay, Trumps that. Like, it trumps it. Get yeah, out. Yeah. Like this is not acceptable. Yeah. And like, I mean, that was at fourteen. And so I'm just, like, you know, that's kind of what I'm saying. Also, like, when it comes to like, you know, I want to, you know, if we one day have like household staff, like yeah. not staff, but like you have people that work, you know, you want to create. I want to raise my kids and as a, as a multicultural home, mm. multicultural like kind of. Um, I mean, possible. schools are so. I mean, it depends where you live, right? But okay. schools are by by all accounts multicultural. At least in London, if you go out of London, they're pretty white. Unless you I grew up, I, all my first schools were very, 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 very white. Yeah, very white. But you grew up in like a small town in Australia, right? Yeah. So that's expected. I mean, come on, who's moving out to a small town in Australia? You know what? Now, yeah. And I'm saying this to all of you for uh, you know, go to the country you because they are. need skilled labor, and we need to diversify the gene pool a little bit. You yeah, know what I mean? We need some. Bit, see, any of it's a little bit rotten yeah. so like you gotta like you know just <laughs> add a little it's bit it's starting to smell a little bit yeah we know what happened to the Habsburgs okay like doesn't matter who's that the Habsburgs they some people, the, the you know? royal families of, of the Hunger, Hunger, Hungarian Austrian Empire the Habsburg family they were like effectively they you know it's like the whole story they, they, they pretty much yeah three quarters of, of all of Europeans royal families had like Habsburgs by the end of their like, I think it was like 400 500 years okay. they were around for but the thing was is because of like you gotta marry your cousin yeah. and you gotta marry this so the Habsburg king had married off his two kids to the two kids of the king of Spain mm. and the Habsburgs had this like um, like de- uh, deformity. A deformity like they had like this big underbite Whoa. and this like huge chin what the jaw lip. went forward yeah okay, and, so, so and, they would, and they would oh yeah an overbite yeah and I, thought, oh, I thought the overbite was when the top was over the top no no the bottom because the top so the underbite is like i i because i had an underbite when i was younger uh. i probably still do a little bit but it's like when your chin like goes in instead of being in line like that and an overbite is when you're like really like forward like that okay yeah so yeah, they yeah. had an overbite they had a really uh overbite. yeah and they were like it was really bad and also yeah. like uh now i was already from inbreeding yeah. and then the spanish king his daughter had a like she was psychotic like she was like she had like i guess you'd call it schizophrenia mm. now or like you know um and so what happened was both these things are hereditary mm. so when they all mushed together and married and so by four generations down yeah like some of the kings of europe at that time were literally like institutionalized like or like they were because they were descendants of them yeah because they and was... what kings were they were like, notable kings there was like yeah there was know. like there's a really famous one who had to i can't remember was it king philip or something yeah um it was like a uh, like a prussian prince had to marry like this uh she was beautiful as well as mm. or something in spain and like it was just he was like he, there's a famous portrait of him it's hideous yeah he just abbed and drooled and was like oh, mad wow. oh, so wow. got the double whammy yeah wow. but ba- hey that's what happened when you privilege you're a prince so you get to have the prettiest of all the princesses you still get to rule your country even though you're manic motherfucker Man, li- life isn't fair that's the thing life is not fair no I mean we're, like we're... A, would you rather be the king but be, be fucked, fucked up, up. <laughs> Like that, <laughs> yeah. Or would you rather and die at thirty? Or would you rather be a pauper and die of syphilis at thirty-two? Have a lot of fun, be handsome, or just like really poor, always drunk and fights. Yeah, you. You know what? Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather have my health. It's 